with fans ripping Ronda Rousey and more. This is Wrestling Up. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Talking about Dave Meltzer, Dax Harwood said this about the wrestling journalist. I respect Dave Meltzer as far as the journalism that goes into the history of professional wrestling. For example, when someone passes away and he writes these beautiful, eloquent obituaries, so eloquent, so beautifully put, it's incredible and it's so detailed. I have a lot of respect for him in that aspect. What I don't necessarily have a lot of respect for is the favorites that are played, the information that is skewed to fit a certain narrative. I don't have a lot of respect for that or even his star ratings rate whatever you want however you want if you don't believe it's five stars that's fine but i tell you this i watched the brain busters versus the heart foundation from summerslam 1989 he gave it two stars i'd give it a good at least four stars it's a beautiful match the way they work together and the tag team psychology and how they use each other and use the referee that's tag team wrestling but he didn't enjoy that match i did i love the match his star ratings that's his opinion. The historian Dave Meltzer I have a lot of respect for. The journalist who puts out a narrative that him and his buddies want to, little less than top-notch respect from me. On his podcast, Harwood also recalled his debut with Cash Wheeler in AEW, where he noted that some were not happy to see them in the promotion. When me and Cash came into AEW, there weren't very many people that were happy to see us there. For example, he and I have talked about it, but Jack Perry was not happy to see us because he thought that me and Cash were going to come in and change up his whole style and try to make him someone he's not. So it's not just CM Punk. It's just whenever you have harmony and a locker room and things are going well, change is kind of hard for people. So yeah, there were a lot of people that were worried about it. Recalling his Joker character from Impact Wrestling, Sting told The Ringer that that's really an extension of me. Most people don't see that unless you get to know me, but I do have a personality. I love to have fun. That's why I can do the A to B wrestler and noted funny man Orange Cassidy spots with ease. I love that kind of stuff, but I don't know. It was something that I felt like I needed to, again, evolve and try something different and step out of the box and take risks. I did, and I had so much fun. That one there was over more than any other character over the years. You talk to somebody like Kevin Nash, Marcus Bagwell, Lex Luger, the Steiner brothers, they'll tell you. It was just kind of who I was. I was constantly doing impersonations, doing voices and accents. I can remember playing cards with Randy Savage in the dressing room. Every hand I was beating him, and every hand I was playing the part of a different person. And I was just on him and on him and on him. And he got so mad because I was taking his money, and he yells, knock it off. I feel like I'm playing 10 different people. It's not fair. I love that kind of stuff with the Joker Sting. We went to the UK, we went to Wembley, and they absolutely loved it. They ate it up, and I had a lot of fun doing that. I had the Joker thing, but I didn't like the way things were going toward the end there. I had to walk away, and I thought, wow, this is a couple of times now that I'm sort of disappearing with my tail between my legs. Paying tribute to former Impact Wrestling commentator Don West, who recently passed away due to lymphoma, Jeff Jarrett wrote on Twitter, Rest in peace and power Don West. When I received the text from Don's wife Terry earlier today on his passing, I had an overwhelming feeling of mixed emotions. So happy and relief for him that he was out of pain and his cancer was gone, but the finality of his death was so dark and it hurt. We FaceTimed just a few days ago, and because of his situation, it's the only conversation that I've ever had with him that I got to do all the talking, and I'm sure he hated that. We reminisced, laughed, and I got the final opportunity to tell him I loved him and that I will see him again one day. The first picture is from the last time we were on stage together, Chicago Starcast. I will miss my buddy. Love you, D-Dub.
When asked about his current relationship with AEW, Eric Bischoff told Chris Van Vliet, Yeah, that one, the AEW relationship, is not as good anymore, but that was my choice. I knew when I said what I was going to say that it would be the last time I get invited there. I was fine with that. I don't worry about it. It is what it is. But when I was bouncing back between WWE and AEW, the first time I got a call from AEW, I called Bruce Pritchard. I said that I just want to let you know out of courtesy and respect for our friendship, I am still tight with Bruce. Please let Vince know if he has got a question about this or an issue. Please give me a shout. If not, I'm going to go ahead. I got the word back to go and have a ball. It's just communication and common courtesy. On his podcast, Road Dog noted that former WWE star Lars Sullivan might have quit pro wrestling due to the pressure from Vince McMahon. Oh, Dexter Loomis. Dexter Loomis is a great guy. I didn't get to know Lars that well, to be quite honest with you. Look, I thought he was, I thought Lars was going to be something special in this industry. A good guy when I met him. Respectful. I don't want to use the word in a derogatory way, but freak of nature. Like he's, he has, I don't know what it's called, but gigantism or whatever. But so, he was probably 6'2 or 3 but 320 pounds of solid muscle like man you know what I mean like it was incredible and so I just thought oh this guy is going to be somebody Vince thought the same thing I think it put too much pressure on the kid and he kind of backed out of it all you know what I mean and so I don't know but I thought I thought he's going to be somebody and the other kid is somebody who just beat Miz I won about 12 grand the other night in a ladder match on Monday Night Raw On Wrestle Rant Radio, Kevin Owens talked about having logic in his storylines for WWE, saying, I'm a big fan of logic. I've always tried to be logical during my time in WWE, maybe more logical than most people may want or choose to be. I do have quite the memory for things that happen in wrestling. I always had that kind of memory, and it's not just for me either. Any chance I have to use that logic, it's always nice and I'm happy to do it. On WWE television sometimes, how can I put this? It's not always the most logical. So when somebody tries to use common sense, it's almost jarring, but I'll be that guy if I need to be. Yeah, I can't say that it's always been like that. I think the change in direction also came with a change in mentality, and everybody's got different ways of thinking about what we do. It used to be like, oh, this is in the past, people won't remember. But man, I've been a wrestling fan my whole life, and when I'd watch it, I'd remember. I'll give you an example that I'll never get over, like the GD or GTV, but we never found out who was behind it, probably Goldust, never got confirmation. It drove me crazy as a fan. It drove me nuts. It came and it went like it never happened. You know what I mean? I don't think that's how things would go today, but at the time, you know, people think differently about what we do. I think wrestling fans have tremendous memories for what they watch and what they see, and I think it's great to acknowledge that and give people the credit they deserve when they're watching something. Recalling an episode of SmackDown where Brock Lesnar kissed him in the ring, Kurt Angle said this about it on his podcast. Oh, I loved it, of course. No. You know what? We got done wrestling. Brock and I were having a really good program together, and I think we were both baby faces at that particular time. We just got done doing a show. We killed it. We had an incredible match. I remember Brock, he put his hand out to shake my hand, and of course, me being the baby face, shook his hand. Then he put his hands out like he wanted to hug, and we hugged. And then he grabbed my face and kissed me right on the lips. It shocked the sh out of me, man. Of all people to do it, Brock Lesnar? Like, he never does this kind of stuff, so it was like, does he really like me? I started questioning if Brock really liked me or not. In a video posted to TikTok, Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley attempt to break zip ties around their wrists. Here's the video. It's impossible. You can't do this. It's not impossible. No shot you can do it. If you can do it, I'll actually be able to do it. I think I can do it. Uh. All right. Oh. <laughs> All right, give me the scissors. Bye, Freeze. Give me the scissors. Bye. Let me get the scissors. With 
Ricochet coming into the ring on SmackDown and swinging a chair at Gunter, with the latter having gotten out of the ring prior, it seems Gunter was hurt. A video posted by a fan in attendance shows Gunter holding a towel over his head with trainers as he appeared to be busted open. Touching on Lana's comments about her husband and AEW star Miro eventually making a return to WWE, Jim Cornette noted on his podcast that, obviously, Lana is not just making this up. One would believe that she is reflecting potential conversations that they have had, whether in their marital bed, or on their marital couch, or in their marital kitchen. Because they're married, they talk to each other quite a lot. And one would think that she wouldn't just be saying something like that out of the blue if it had never been discussed. Or if he was saying, well, I love it here in AEW. W, honey, and I never want to go back to the evil empire, which is WWE. Prior to losing her SmackDown Women's Title to Charlotte Flair, Ronda Rousey attempted to cut a promo, where she confused the Royal Rumble for SummerSlam. Many fans have reacted to this online writing, what was Ronda talking about? OMG, get this woman off television. Straight embarrassment. Can't cut a single promo. Seeing Ronda hold a live mic. The saddest part is she never gets better. Like, if I see a little improvement, cool, I might ease up, but every promo is terrible. You want a challenge for this title at SummerSlam? No, wait, Royal Rumble. That's last summer, yeah. She need Paul Heyman help or something. Did she say last Sumer instead of Summer? She needs a Paul Heyman persona to do her mic work for her. Them mic skills terrible. A manager would do wonders for her. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all later.